Uh, this morning, I want to talk about cell tissues and organs. Uh, when you when you approach the table to give a massage, you need to be aware of more than just the fact that you're going to work on the body. Okay. And I think that many times uh, in massage, uh, in the past, it has been that, that you're just going to get in and work on the body. Most of the massages that are given, like in health spas and this sort of thing, where you are crowded as far as getting in, doing one body, doing the next body, doing the next body, doing the next body, you begin to get into that routine of just working on bodies. And when you do that, you begin to lose perspective as far as what you're really doing as far as a massage therapist is concerned. When you get in and give a massage to someone, you need to be aware that there's a Greek mystery lying there on the table. You know, a real mystery. Because though in medicine and in science we've gotten to where we can describe a lot of the things that happens as far as the body is concerned, we, we really are slow in being able to explain why these things happen. And we come up with a lot of theories. If you had uh, anatomy and physiology in college, uh, you will remember studying cell metabolism and this sort of thing. And you got into the Krebs cycle, uh, the breaking down of polysaccharides and trisaccharides and disaccharides, and the introduction of KADHs and ADHs and all that sort of thing, and uh, the production of energy and etc. And when you finally got that all memorized, as you went through it, you got to the last paragraph in the chapter, and it said that this is the most widely accepted theory of metabolism. Okay. And you just realized you spent all that time learning a theory, all right? Not that it actually happens that way, but that's the way we think it happens, okay? And we are limited by our technology in being able to understand what is really going on as far as the cell is concerned. Really, we haven't known that much about cells, and we're only getting to where we can, with electron microscopes, really get in and see how cells are made up and be able to take pictures of what's going on as far as the cell is concerned. And, and being able to take pictures, we can say, oh, look what's happening here, and look what's happening there, but that still doesn't explain there. There's still the mystery of how this whole thing happens. So it, it, life, life is still a mystery, in spite of all we know, uh, life is still a mystery. And when you give a massage, you need to be aware that as a massage therapist, you are dealing with one of the greatest mysteries, and that is what makes this life, this body work, what really causes it to function. We really don't know today what causes sore muscles. Uh, lactic acid is out, if you think that's the answer. We've decided lactic acid is not the answer. Okay, uh, but we do know there is something about soreness in a muscle. We really haven't gotten around to explaining a lot about what causes a muscle to be tense. There, there's all sorts of things that we have not explained. Okay? We're able to describe them, but not explain them. And if you move up to the table thinking that everything on that table has been explained, you're going to miss out on the real nuance, the real flavor of what a massage should be, and that is this mystery here dealing with that mystery there. When we're in here working, uh, like right now, teaching, if you begin to think about what goes on as a teacher and students in this idea of communicating and all of that, there is a certain place you reach that you don't understand how we communicate to one another. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's quite, uh, quite mysterious. And the whole purpose of this lecture is to really give you a sense of the mystery as far as a, a massage is concerned. We know it works, but we have not been able to scientifically, that is with data, prove a a necessary level of predictability to explain why a massage works. We just know that people get on the table and they get, quote, a good massage. What is a good massage? A good massage. Well, a good massage is when you feel good. Well, with some people that means roughing them up. With some people that means feeling sorry for them. I have one person that I know that the real place for me to get into is feeling sorry for that person. 
the Bible feels sorry for them, my hands will do exactly the right work. And they say it's the most wonderful massage they ever had. What's a good massage? Well, when people get a good massage, they feel better, they function better, they are more relaxed, and they're able to get out there and perform better. Now, you try to put that in scientific terminology. Right? It, does, it doesn't compute. And that's why our scientific community has a great deal of difficulty accepting the benefits of massage. And you need to know that the answer has not yet been found simply because of the lack of technology that we have to be able to explain why massage works. So this morning I'm going to get in and just give you a little bit of a perspective here as far as the massage therapist is concerned as we talk about cells, tissues, and organs. And we'll start out with the basic building block as far as the body is concerned. And that is the cell. When you think of the body, the, the body is a, uh, is a fascinating colony of cells. It all started from one, but the differentiation took place as the body developed. And to get a real sense as to the size of this colony, we would start out with about this many cells as far as the body is concerned, like 500,000 million million trillion cells. Now that's roughly a body, give or take a trillion or so. And, and it, if you can get the same sort of uh, an attitude toward the body that uh, I have when I'm flying, you know, <clears throat> and flying over some city, uh, looking down below, and you see uh, all of this movement of light and and you see there's certain quarters and this sort of thing, and the light is brighter in some places than others. And you can make out buildings and houses, and you're flying over 30,000 feet looking down at the city. And then I always get into the, into, uh, you know, the kids are doing their homework, uh, people are going to work, the hospitals are busy, you've got doctors and nurses moving about, you've got ambulances, in some of the houses, they're having big fights, and some of the houses are making love, and some of the houses, they wish they'd never met one another, and they're sitting there in silence. And some of the houses are wishing they knew one another, trying to figure out what's going on in that other person. And as you're flying over, you look down, and you think of all that kinds of stuff going on, OK? Well, when you look at a body, it's like being able to see however many Thousands of feet, I would need to be away to see a colony of 500 trillion people and see all of this sort of stuff going on. And some people are doing this and some people are doing that. Some cells are doing this, some cells are doing that. And right now, while you're sitting here thinking, your, your stomach, there's cells down in your stomach, they're working out a little hydrochloric acid and they're working out some pepsin, you know, and they're working out some renin and the, the stomach muscles are in there pushing and pulling and pushing and pulling. All of that's going on. Just like as you fly over a factory, you think of all the people who are down there pushing and pulling and machines are working and, and this sort of thing. See, like a giant industrial complex. Now that's the attitude to have whenever you approach a person. And, and a person says, it's tight right here. And I say, hmm, why is it tight right there? Why are those muscles, those workers, upset? What's going on maybe in some other part of the body that causes this to go on? What's, the, what's in the belief system, see? What's in the, what's in the uh, trauma? What, what are the traumas this body has experienced? Uh, why does this become the appropriate response to what this person is going through? This, these muscles are telling me something about what this body is going through. I wonder what this body is going through that is causing these muscles to get tight. Now when you begin to look at it that kind of way, you move to a new level rather than just getting into, oh, I've got a couple of tight muscles, the active joint movements, passive joint movements, little Jones counter strain and all sorts of things like that, and take the mechanical approach to it. To me, you lose the, uh, you lose the flavor, you know. Uh, so, 
When you think of the body, you're thinking of this tremendous colony of cells that are working together to produce one common life. And they're all interdependent on one another to be able to keep this body going. If any one group breaks down, then the whole body will suffer. And that's where we start as far as the body is concerned. Now, let's talk about a cell. And this is a, a generalized cell. It's not any one cell, but that's kind of like saying, what is a person like? Well, a person is like this, okay? With the, uh, with the cell, you first of all have the membrane. And with the membrane, it's this outside coating of a, what is called, semi-permeable membrane, okay? A membrane. You, you've seen this to some extent whenever you've uh, peeled a boiled egg. And you've got that membrane between the shell and the egg. Okay, that is something like this membrane. The only problem is that if you think of that as being the membrane, that's rather static, particularly after the egg has been boiled, okay? In your own body, this is a very active agent as far as the cell is concerned because it is the membrane here that controls <coughs> what goes into the cell and what comes out of the cell. And it's very sensitive in that way. So that as far as the cell is concerned, you can have a lot of sugar in the body fluid around the cell, but if you don't have insulin present to make this membrane permeable, as far as sugars are concerned, the sugars cannot get inside. And when it comes to secretory cells, like in your stomach and this sort of thing, until the stimulus comes and causes this membrane to become permeable and release hydrochloric acid or whatever it is out of the cell, it will contain that fluid within the cell and nothing will take place. So it takes a stimulus, it takes some sort of a condition that will cause this membrane to permit either materials to go into the cell or will permit materials that, are, that have been produced in the cell to go out of the cell, even to the extent of permitting carbon dioxide to go out and permitting oxygen to go in. All those movements are controlled. 